This video is going to have a very retro feel in the sense of that it sounds like the original iPad videos, uh, in the sense that there's not too much bass, it filters out lots of the bass, it's the built-in microphone in the device. I'm also going to take a lamp to bits, and I've taken a lamp to bits in a while, have I can't think of the last time I took a lamp to bits. So this is a uh, six watt Poundland lamp under the electric brand. So the first thing is I'm noticing here, Tooth test, that is plastic. Has it come off? Should I test it first? Oh, no, it's not coming off. It's well glued on. Okay, let's get uh, these bits out of the way and test this. So here's a lamp holder. And let's get the hoppy meter. Oh, you know what? I've not tested. The hoppy meter with this particular recording device so let's see what it does how it handles the horrible low speed multiplexing it flickers horribly yeah which isn't you know that's the fault of this device it's multiplexing a large number of displays and it means that you know i think probably one digit is lit at a time over the whole run of these not sure and it just means it's very very flickery so let's plug the lamp in and see what we're getting. Well, that's not going to go in. We'll have to use a death dart to pack it up. That's better. And the lamp. So it's showing a power of roughly 5.8 watts, which isn't bad for a 6 watt lamp. Uh, it's showing 48 milliamps. And a power factor of 0.5, which is typical. Now, in the past, I would have thought, it's very warm colour of the light, um, I would have thought the power factor, I would, I would have thought something that's rated 6 watt would be a switch mode. And the switch mode, if depending on the type of switch mode, particularly if it's buck regulator, tend to have modestly good power factor. But um, some of them don't. The only way we're going to find out is to open this up. So tell you what, let's open it up then. It's uh, yielded proper 6 watt results, that's good. these out the way and see if I can spudge this open. If this doesn't open easily, which it might open easily. Oh, oh, yeah, this isn't promising, is it? I may have to use unreasonable force and try not to burst my pudger and spudger in the process. If this doesn't open quickly, I will do what I normally do and just jump cut to having shredded it apart already. Mm, it's not looking promising. I get the feeling this is going to break in the process. Colour temperature of the picture. Worth mentioning, it's very hard finding a setting that actually looks right. And I think the problem is these LED lamps up here are putting out a very odd colour that isn't, you know... If you put this to automatic uh, colour balance, it kind of works, but it keeps seeing the uh, background as being this sort of off-white colour and it tries to match and you get sort of very weird results. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to pause to get this open because I don't think this is going to open anytime soon. One moment, please. So as predicted, that was quite hard to get apart. I have smashed it apart. I've also extended these wires so we could do some little electrical tests. The power supply is a capacitive dropper. I wasn't expecting that. The LED panel itself is a usual aluminium backed panel with the thin shim of the fiberglass on this side and then the copper tracks. And uh, the housing, the reason it was so hard to get out is because it's not just clipped in by a very sharp edge. You know, it's instead of being ramped, it's quite a, a distinctive stepped edge. But it's also uh, glued in with this, a silicon goo that is also used to... Uh, stick this aluminium insert in, which uh, this couples at the edges onto that aluminium insert and it tell, takes some of the heat down to help dissipate it because uh, it is, after all, a 6 watt lamp, which is quite odd. So the capacitive dropper, let's say, uh, the circuit board here is notable. Uh, the, I extended leads because uh, they were really short and they snapped off. Um, and I want to actually put the clamp meter around this to test it, but the Circuit board is clearly designed to have a little tab out this end that maybe was designed to poke through a circuit board and then solder onto the circuit board directly with no wires. But they've just cut that off and they've connected the wires direct onto component leads here. 
So let's uh, reverse engineer this. It's not going to take that long. It's a very classic capacitive dropper circuit. So we've got the two connections coming in. They are marked live and neutral. However, note that uh, in the UK bayonet cap lamp holder, the outer metal case is not an electrical conductor. It's just a mechanical structure. The two contacts, live, neutral, neutral, live, whichever way around they end up, are on the back here. So they can be either polarity, really. So we have, let's just mark it as a sine wave to show the mains coming in. Um, the first thing that happens is it goes through this, which could be an inductor, could be a resistor. Uh, and that's the live. So we'll draw it up there. Now let's test what that is before I go any further. I don't want to say it's a resistor. I'm going to guess it's a 10 ohm resistor. Because uh, quite often they'll use a 10 ohm metal film resistor as a kind of fusible resistor. So let's uh, try and get a good connection onto this. Yeah, giving the slight uh, drop in the leads as well, that's, yeah, that's a 10 ohm resistor as far as I'm concerned. That's good enough. And 10 ohm. So it comes on, it goes over to the capacitor, which has, oh, this has just snapped off. That's going to kind of mess our tests up. I'll just stick the solder iron on while we're reverse engineering this, and we'll solder that right back on. Um... So that's going to the capacitor, which has a 334, that's 33 three and four zeros, 330k resistor across it to discharge that capacitor when you unplug it. Because otherwise, uh, if you if that resistor wasn't there and you unplugged it, if the, depending on when it had been turned off, there might be a charge across that capacitor and you could actually get quite a zing across these contacts. When I made my first uh, LED lamps myself, with, I didn't use that resistor, and uh, I got quite a few nips off the cap. Quite a noticeable nip. The capacitor is 115. That's a 1.1 microfarad is quite an odd value. 400 volt. I wonder if that's a specific value for LED lamps, that they've get, increased the resolution, so to speak, to allow for finer tuning of wattages. Then we've got the other connection is going straight to the bridge rectifier, as is the capacitor. So it's the classic capacitive dropper. There's nothing really special about this. It's a time-tested circuit. Very simple, not really dimble, but uh, I'll just the simplest possible circuit and the most reliable you could uh, drive an LED with for just normal use. So the output of the bridge rectifier goes to the Electrolytic. This is just an absolute textbook uh, thing, really. And there's another resistor, 334, another 330k resistor across that. So that's 330k. This time, it's not to so much discharge the capacitor. It, it will have that effect. It means that when you turn the lamp off, it won't sort of go down and then fade the last wee bit really slowly because the LEDs will light quite brightly, even at microamps. Uh, but it's probably also to reduce the risk of it glowing when, you know, you get slight capacitive leakage through the switch cabling of your main, your lighting circuit and it makes the um, makes the LEDs just linger that little bit. Then, on the positive lead, oh, let's say, what's that value? A capacitor. 250 volt, 6.8 microfarad. 250 volt. 6.8 microfarad. It's a standard value, but it's an odd value to see in a lamp like this. Then we've got a resistor from positive to the output, and then the negative to the output is just soldered straight onto the electrolytic. So um, it's lead. So that resistor is green, black, black, silver. Uh, green is five, black is zero. Uh, the third band is black. It's a multiplier. It's a zero, so it's not multiplying. Silver's 10% tolerance, that's a 5, it's 50 ohms. Let's test that, shall we? And then it just goes through all the LEDs. I'll just draw three LEDs. There's 10 LEDs, but they might be multi-chip LEDs. Well, they almost certainly will be multi-chip LEDs. Lazy LEDs with slightly phallic, phallic arrows pointing off them. Um, meter. 200 ohm range will do that nicely. Let's uh, measure that resistor and see if it is uh, 
what I think it is, roughly 50 ohms. Forty six point seven. Yep, that's all right, given the 10 percent tolerance. So let's uh, solder this lead back on. Yep, that's the circuit. It's just classic. This capacitor here is, uh, well, this resistor is doubling up as the inrush limiter, and it's also going to blow like a fuse if the thing goes short circuit. The uh, capacitor here lets through a small portion as it charges and discharges in the AC waveform. It lets a small portion go through the rectifier, getting rectified to DC, pumps up this capacitor here, just gently sort of acts like a water tank for the electrons. And then the this resistor will limit the peak current, uh, the sort of, I suppose, inrush current through LEDs. It just provides a slight protection against ripple. And uh, the current then, when they, the voltage is high enough across capacitor, the LEDs light, that's it. Very, very simple. Very popular circuit, particularly in cheaper lamps, as this is being from Poundland. Let's uh, try and fix this. Nibble some of this heat shrink off. And solder that back onto the circuit board. I'll just solder it straight onto the back. So I'll put some solder on that. Reflow that so it's got some juicy lead based solder. Down with lead free solder. Oops. Slippery capacitors and solder that on there. Okay, now we're ready to do tests. And the first test I'm going to do, well, let's power it up, see if it actually works now. In comes a quick test. Since people will ask, you can get these in the UK from most of the electronic distributors. There's one guy selling them in America, Andy. I shall put a link to his uh, web page below. He's selling them with the American and Canadian colours. And he, he mentioned recently he's got the three phase ones in there as well. So let's put that in there. That in there. Quite expensive devices, but you know what? In a workshop environment, they're just really useful. So let's see if this goes bang. No, it's lit very brightly. That's nice. Okay, so let's uh, start. Let's do a test. Let's do the clamp meter. In comes a little clamp meter. The one that I'm just taking such a shine to. I like this clamp meter. It's cheap and very, very functional. It's really, it's the first, as far as I'm concerned, it's the first really affordable uh, clamp meter with the DC uh, function in the clamp. So I'm going to select DC on the clamp. I'm going to zero that out. And then I'm going to power it up and we'll see what current's going through the LEDs. 27 milliamps. Okay. Reasonable enough. Uh, what voltage is across LEDs? This is where I could have stuck a set of leads into this, but uh, I'll just grab my usual meter for that. So let's set this to 200 volts, because I think it's going to be quite high. And I'm going to put on my shades for this so I don't blind myself while I'm trying to look at where I'm putting this. So I'm going to uh, put the meter across these two connections, make sure I don't touch the circuit board here and get a zap. Uh, 187 volts, 10 LEDs, roughly 18.7 volts per LED. Uh, that suggests there's six 3 volt chips in each of those. So each of these LED packages actually contains six LEDs. So that was 18.7 volts. Let's get the calculator. The big calculator. Um, 18.7 volts per LED times 0 0.0, I think it was 0 0.027, equals half a watt each. Okay. So yeah, that's about uh, five watts. So probably just a little bit higher than half watt each. Then, uh, if that uh, lamp was dissipating about six watts. Uh, okay. Right. For those of you uh, saying that in previous videos you thought the new recording device was maybe offering a, it seemed like it was in too far. It was not covering such a large area. 
It's because the previous device I was filming with it was enormous. It's actually, it covers a larger area. You can see the tape outlines in the bench where I've had to shift the, my sort of mark, working area out wider just to actually accommodate this. So, um, yes, it's a typical, what can I really say about it? It's a typical capacitive dropper based dollar store Poundland style lamp. I've, I've never been over comfortable with the high power ratings of some of these. This one being rated about six watts. That's going to get pretty hot, even with this aluminium shell to help dissipate the heat. Um, I st still prefer sticking to the three watt lamps. And if I wanted six watts, I'd use a splitter, one of the little Y adapters, and just put a couple of lamps in, in place of... Uh, so I'm using two three watts instead of a six watt, because I just feel that, you know, uh, LEDs are just going to last a lot longer when they're, you know, run at lower power. And uh, when you put these lamps, these high, higher power lamps into enclosed fixtures where there's or in hot rooms, it can just result in a lot of excessive heat in the lamp and it shortens their life greatly. Into the, in some extreme cases, they only last a few days, which isn't great. Uh, some people said that LEDs physically discolored in some of the earlier ones, but that was the... I think that was the earlier Poundland 5 watt one, which didn't have this aluminium heat dissipator in it. So that would probably be a big factor because probably the only difference is just a few degrees before it starts sort of going out of thermally out of control, really, with the, the build up of heat. But yeah, it's an interesting enough lamp, especially for the sort of price level it's at. And it seems to be manufactured to fill, to fill that particular price level.